Today we received this Nintendo Switch from New Jersey with no power. According to our customer, he replaced the charging port along with the USB-C charging control IC to no avail. It still does not charge or power on. So we are going to show you how to diagnose this switch to get it up and running. Here is a guide that will show you each step you need to take in order to find the source of the problem related to the charging issue. First, connect the charger. Then we are going to check the voltage on this test point. It must be either 5 volts or 14 volts depending if you are using a regular or fast charger. This test point is right above the charging port. If we don't get the correct voltage reading on our multimeter, we replace the charging port. Once that's complete, you go back and check the voltage on the test point. If the voltage doesn't match, then we need to move on to replace the circuit M92T36, which is also known as the USB-C charging control IC. So let's put this into practice. We place our probe on the test point and we see here that we are in fact getting the 5 volts reading that we need. So in this case, we will not replace the charging port or the USB-C charging IC. Next, we will check the capacitor located next to the circuit BQ24193, known as the battery charging IC. This capacitor also requires a 5 volt or 14 volt reading. If we do not get the voltage we need, we will then replace the USB-C charging control IC. This is where we will check for the voltage, and we are only getting 0.595 instead of the 5 volts needed. So now we will go to USB-C charging control IC located here and check what's going on. After a closer look, we see that three of the pins are not soldered properly. Remember, our customer had replaced this before sending the device to us, so we will reflow it to solder the pins into place. We apply heat at 380 degrees Celsius and flux, and as you can see, the pins are soldered into place. Once completed, we will go back and check the capacitor with our multimeter. We are now getting the 5 volts we need, so we move on to the next step on our guide. Our guide tells us to check this capacitor to the upper left of the battery charging IC. We need a reading of 4.1 volts, and if we do not get this reading, we will need to replace BQ24193, also known as a battery charging IC. So we put our probe to check the voltage and come back with 0 volts. Before replacing the battery charging IC, we are going to check for any short circuits. As we check all neighboring capacitors, we find a short here. This leads us to believe that the battery charging IC is defective. So we take our motherboard to the thermal camera and we clearly see that the battery charging IC is getting hot. We continue following our guide and we will remove the battery charging IC. We recheck the shorted capacitor to verify if the short was still present and it is. So this tells us that the battery charging IC was not the cause of the short. Therefore we will need to do further investigation. We remove the shorted components that are located around the battery charging IC to see if this removes the short. However, it doesn't. Therefore, we reinstall all the components back into place. Up to this point, we have completed the steps on the guide. So we decide to take a deeper look into the motherboard. We see that in this area of the motherboard, there are signs of corrosion due to water damage. This capacitor in particular has corrosion visible to the naked eye. It is located next to the power supply IC. We test all neighboring capacitors and they are all shorted to ground. So our next step is to remove the power supply IC to see if this is the cause of our short. Once removed, we clearly see corrosion on the traces. So we are pretty confident that this is going to be the cause of the issue as to why the so we are pretty confident this is going to be the cause of the issue as to why the device is not powering on or charging. Now it's time to get to work and remove all of this corrosion. Apply flux and solder and then with solder wick we clean it off. We use alcohol to clean the area as well. Well now doesn't this look good? Next we remove the capacitor that has corrosion on it. We test the line on diode mode one more time. If we get a reading of zero we know the short is still present. Any reading above zero tells us the short has been resolved. So here we are getting 0.281, which means the line is active once more and there's no short. 
Now we know the source of the short was the water damage. Next, we will reinstall all the circuits that were removed. We start by reballing the power supply IC. We create the solder balls by using the stencil and reposition the IC into place while placing heat. We check on diode mode one more time to confirm if the short is present. We get a reading of 0.349, which shows an active line, so that means the IC is working and the short is no longer present. Our next step is to get a donor capacitor to reinstall on the board. Now that all components are back into place, we will make sure we get the readings we need. The charging port test point gives us the 5 volts that we need. This is also giving us the 5 volts that we need. The battery charging IC is giving us 4.1 volts, so this tells us the device is charging. And lastly, the battery connector checks off at 4.1 volts. So let's build this up and bench test it. We connect the switch to the charger and let's see the magic happen. We see that the charging icon appears on the battery and it powers on like a champ. If you want to learn how to do repairs like this, please visit our website for our upcoming training schedule. We offer 100% hands-on training that gives you a step-by-step -step instruction on how to effectively repair mobile electronic devices. If you have a device that needs to be repaired by a professional, mail it in today. Follow the links below for more information.